Good afternoon, gentlemen. Our company's name is Modern Express, and our members are myself, Mr. Pedal, Mr. Arjun Kumar, Mr. Denny Kusang Nama, and Mr. Nora Right. Starting off with the presentation. Who is Sorry, who is Tenjing? Uh, myself, and Mr. Arjun Myself, Arjun Please carry on. And uh, tell us who is looking after which product, which, which job, which task. Tell us. So, um, I will be looking, uh, I will be explaining the company's vision values. Uh, directions and uh, I'll be giving a, a brief uh, introduction on the capabilities of the industrial analysis and uh, Arjun Kumar will be uh, following after me, uh, followed by Tenzing and uh, Nara will be to get the conclusion. Uh, I uh, looked after the company as a CEO, um, Arjun looked after operations and marketing, uh, Aditya looked after human resource and Tenzing was the financial bank. Starting off with the presentation. The vision of the company, Malden Express uh, vision was to be the number one luxury brand after changing the business strategy. So we, when we first started off, we started off as a normal fair airliner, and after we saw the result of the first quarter, which was not that impressive, we sat into uh, a meeting and a uh, formal minding was uh, uh, passed, uh, which decided that the company will now change its strategy and become uh, and enter the luxury market. Providing best of his class service to the customers and giving them a good experience so that the first time flyers turn into regulars. When you get in the luxury market, as far as we were concerned, when people, when customers get the best service, the best in class um, uh, service they're expecting in an airline, they might as well, the first timers might as well turn into the regular customers. So we focus on giving the best quality service as a luxury airline. Expansion was always a future plan of the company because we believe that the more we expand, the more reach and powerful we will become in the market. So we were always open to expansions. In the first quarter, second, uh, uh, after the uh, after the results of the first, second, first and the second quarter, we always um, focus on expansion. Be it uh, human resource, we uh, we hired a couple of uh, salespersons in each quarter. We bought uh, a couple of aircrafts in these and. Every quarter, we closely analyze the financial sector and, and made decisions on routes, acquiring aircrafts, uh, acquiring uh, more, uh, recruiting more um, employees uh, as a part of um, uh, becoming profitable. The values of the company. The company is always looked after its employees with, uh, with a wage rate agreement each quarter after it started being stable and profitable in the market. After the third and fourth quarter, our company was placed. Uh, uh, in our second as uh, in terms of stock price and third in terms of net profit so we thought the company was being stable and consistent which is why it looked after employees by increasing their wage rates and uh, keeping them happy. This is a test set because the company was growing in terms of uh, in terms of its assets, its airlines, the number of staffs and the routes it was flying uh, to and the mergers so the company was a fast growing luxury airline. Cross-functional working was one of the major strengths of the company. Every department had sat down at the end of, the, at end of the each quarter to take necessary steps and decisions together, which turned out to be highly effective to all departments and the company as a whole. So despite of working in separate departments, our company decided on working in a cross-functional team, which means that department, uh, marketing, operations, finance, and the whole, uh, the whole um, uh, heads of the company sat down in a meeting to take the final decision for the better company. Each step the company took was to fulfill the needs of the customers. For example, so the fuel purchase, uh, fuel purchase decisions, mm -hmm. spot or fixed, the allocation of CSR budgets, mm -hmm. each small budget or small decisions was also closely examined uh, to direct the company in the best way. Industry analysis. Mm -hmm. I will be giving a brief uh, um, uh, information on the industry analysis which will be followed by the rest of the members. Mm -hmm. Uh, the airline industry was seen to be a, 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 a legalistic market having few firms <coughs> competing in the market but a small change in the decision of any one firm would affect the entire industry. Which means that in an airline industry even if you see in countries like Nepal, mm -hmm. wherever you see like there are few firms mm -hmm. compared to that of uh, the regular market, reg regular firms like in the market. So it's a, it's a big investment so there are few firms in the market but a small change in the decision of any one firm would uh, affect the uh, market scenario of the whole industry. A small fall in the roots, prices, and other vital decisions would put the firm in a situation where it would require few quarters to recover its loss as a result of foxes in the quality is seen to be a bit low in the first quarter. And gradually, 
gets up higher after we enter into the luxury market. And this is after the merger. A uh, few changes are likely to happen, so the graph is stable from, uh, let's say, the third quarter. But the reliability, we always uh, kept a good eye on the maintenance and the reliability of the company. Uh, HR capabilities. The company was capable of keeping its employees happy and motivated with an impressive agreement and motivation of the Which means that after the fourth quarter, when the company was being uh, uh, was company was more stable, the company gave more benefits to its employees, keeping the HR, you know, the human resource happy. Firm was capable of becoming one of the most effective one in making workers work in cross-functional process. The motivation factor that the uh, company of the generation needs, when you work in the cross-functional departments, you come to know about uh, the employees, the colleagues you're working with, and it's likely to be more productive. Every quarter with the increase in the company's profit and ranking, the company added up more employees, meaning that the company was able to handle more employees and keep them focused, productive, disciplined, effective, and well known. We recruited uh, a couple of employees from other successful firms. We also increased the salesperson and the uh, HR, the graph of the uh, employees were, uh, in terms of number was being high, but the HR um, department was able to manage um, the, uh, the workforce. Finance and accounting. The finance and accounting department was capable of keeping a proper track of records for the past quarters and evaluating them to refer it for the next quarter. Uh, in a market like um, airlines, you need to closely examine the, you need to allocate the job of the pilots, crew members. There are a number of staffs you need to you know, uh, closely look after and allocate the job of the pilot. It was capable enough to ensure that the resources provided were used sincerely and the most effective way. Whatever the resources the operations department uh, had, uh, they made sure that the resources were allocated in the best possible way. Any problems in certain scenarios were solved quickly with less time to in, in decision making as the company's HR structure was not hierarchical and more liberal which the firm thought was the most vital in the scenario. Sometimes when the CEO is not present in the, uh, in the company, uh, uh, we need to take quick decisions which is why uh, the HR structure was not enough. So I will be quickly explaining about the company's internal capabilities. Organizational capabilities refer to the way in which people and system work together in the organization. So they, uh, basically in the environment express, the integration of the operation department, marketing department, and financial, uh, financial economy department, and human resource department happens by expecting the start in the organization. So, FCN airlines capitalizes on the integrated solutions and process. Operations of the airline is the crucial expert in the airline industry. And close data to the absent operations are significant benefits by cost containment and performance that means for access to customer obligation. So, uh, from the graph, it's illustrated that the maximum mileage daily, uh, daily capacity of the aircrafts versus total flown mileage per day. So, you can see that from 41 to 48, we are consistent and we never access the total, maximum, we never access the maximum mileage. Uh, that our aircraft work, so we are efficient in that sense. And uh, passenger work factor simply measures the uh, caps, uh, sitting caps relation of the aircraft. So you can see that we uh, above the 50 percent in the quarter one, and we limited that position to the quarter eight. So in this in this case also we are able to gain the break even, so we are never lost. We are never lost in this quarter. And you can see the financial capabilities, and you can see the income receivable versus account payable. And uh, in each and every quarter, account receivable is higher than the account payable. So, uh, so for the eight quarter, we went through, through the industry area as a one three five and in the Brasilia. Uh, we won three in that one and we this. So basically, the main motto was that we want to increase the mileage of our aircraft and we want to solve the luxury market with the soft sector. With the main route was the luxury market and we want to penetrate other sub markets from the luxury market as well. And. Uh, you can see that we have increasing the increasing promotion and marketing budget from quarter 2 to quarter 8. Basically, I have to break down the quarter. So, basically, uh, we are increasing the promotion and marketing budget. The main motto was to create the demand in the market uh, from, uh, by increasing the promotion and marketing budget. And by this, we want to work the customers away from the competitor as well. And uh, in case of human resource department, we never, uh, we always give $20,000 uh, for the quality training budget to motivate our employee and uh, to, for the higher production of our airlines company as well. And uh, when you go for the compensation policy, it, it includes the wages and the salary that we get 
of all our employees. So we always build above the industry awareness voice and we are doing that in four quarter as well. Initially in the company strategy, like, we, we actually planned to be the leading luxury airline in the, in the luxury industry and our only competitor was Chichi Airways. So as you can see, like, you know, after the end of the eighth quarter, our position was second position in the luxury industry and we were actually third in the, in the, third in the whole out industry. Uh, so our first, and we also planned to increase our revenue by 20% every quarter. So in the first quarter, we had a revenue of, of $1.4 million and by the end of eighth quarter, our revenue was $9.4 million. So like, I think, and average, uh, we've grown by almost 20% every quarter. And another strategy was to increase our fleet size, like, to fleet size every quarter to increase our maximum capacity with the, the utilization of our aircraft. So in the first quarter, first quarter we had three beachcraft, and in the eighth quarter, we actually owned three. We owned three Embraer ERG aircraft, these two ERG and, and, uh, and two Embraer Priscilla. And another, part, another goal of the company was to increase wage rate by 2% every quarter. So as you can see from the eighth, by the end of the eighth quarter, we had a range of 6% above the prevailing uh, wage rates. So another thing was return on equity. Our return on equity was always, as you can see, it's always high, it's always, it's always high compared to the industry average. So in the first, as you can see from quarter five, you know, our return on equity has always been so has always been high compared to the compared to the industry, but it's been slightly less compared to our performance targets. And return on sales also, also since uh, being a luxury airlines, our uh, return on sales also uh, is always high. Performance analysis. So our earning per trade, our earning per share of stock, as you can see, increase in profitability of the company, our increase in EPS. Increase in share of selling led to fall in EPS from the sixth quarter. Our stock price was always the second highest. It was second highest uh, compared to our competitors. The first quarter we actually flew as, as, as a normal airline. So due to that reason, like, you know, we, we were actually leasing aircraft. So we actually realized that like, you know, once, you realize, once you lease aircraft, the operation costs become very high. So that's why, so that's why we decided to actually uh, finance. That's why we decided to purchase our own aircraft starting on the third quarter. And, and the decision, and the decision, so I just like to continue. And it's an business of our company. It's uh, choosing to fly the luxury. Uh, yeah, time we got this now. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. We are operating as normal airlines in the first quarter, and after the first quarter, we moved to luxury airlines. So that's a big disease. So, um, okay, uh, why are you going to the luxury airline area, and what are specific changes you have to make in your organization and in the Fleet service, fleets and services and all those. How could you specifically move from normal segment to luxury segment? First is because first reason why we moved to a luxury industry because it was because of the price. The price was very really high in the luxury airlines, and even our fixed cost would have been the same. Even if you are actually operating as normal airline, our fixed cost such as leasing aircraft, producing aircraft would have been the same. So we thought if you if you actually move into a luxury industry, our profit margins are going to increase since our profit since our prices are going to increase rapidly. And plus, we thought it's a very small market. Luxury industry is a very niche market. So, so luxury would come luxury without any cost. We will have some cost, but so, but our fixed cost will remain the same because because the fixed cost of actually variable costs. Variable cost actually is going to increase compared to the, compared to our fixed cost, but our fixed cost will, see, will remain the same, and our price will dramatically increase by almost to almost three folds. Because in the in the normal airline, we were actually charging thirty one cents per per uh, per mile. And in the luxury airlines, we actually charge 51, 51 cents per mile. So actually, our profit margin increases like threefold. So due to that reason, and plus we thought it was a very small market. Luxury market was a very small market, and most of the competitors were all in the normal industry and in the budget industry. So we only had. What are the features of services to differentiate it from normal operations to luxury operations? What are the features you changed? So our features, like you know, first first thing was like the luxury customers. They actually they wanted a very high printed discount. Like you know, they didn't want any delays. They didn't want any delays in their flight, so our maintenance cost had to be very high. So we, we always ensured right from the second quarter that our maintenance cost was like, you know, at the close of the top notch. So our maintenance cost was very really high initially, and luxury customers also expected a very uh, very high quality in class flight, uh, flight service. So we always ensured right from the second quarter that our in class cabin service was, like, you know, was top notch. Cost per seat and price per seat different. So our price per seat, price per, I think our cost per seat will. Back to increase in spirit after, after being a luxury, uh, being a luxury airline, 
because our fixed cost will have, because our fixed cost will have been easy, but our variable cost will have been easy. But that will be offset, that will be actually made up by an increase in the price for increase in price for cost per, increase in price, like price per, so price per amount of time. So the increment from 36 cent to 51 cent would cover up the cost of the empty seats. So that was the basic thing. And we also uh, uh, bought, okay, just to help you out because you could like present all the items. This, that, that, that. So, uh, would you just briefly mention, uh, very briefly, one brief incident during your say, uh, eight quarters? Okay, so, so perfect. Perfect. Uh, it was a dual disc map uh, incident. I'm sorry, sorry? It was a dual disc map uh, incident. Uh, it was like a merger. Yeah. Uh, after this, uh, after the merger of in quarter four, uh, our company based fund boom uh, in the all in our net profit, our stock price went high uh, in, uh, in comparison to part, uh, all the before the before quarters. Uh, so the the special incident uh, the, the had uh, had led our yeah. money uh, yeah. the, the different uh, yeah. the, the, the different issues. Okay, so that, that was a critical incident we have to observe. Okay, so that's and was, was that a bigger company you merged with? Yeah. In your presentation at the beginning, you said it was a big company and the bad bank traders to merge with them. So you merged with a big company? With a bigger company. So you lost your identity? Well, we lost our identity. That's why okay, in Q8, Q5, 6, 7, 8, you're setting up yourselves as a separate company. How does that work? So um, uh, we are merging up with the, uh, the other company. We had to change our uh, the name of the company. Uh, and yeah, we lost your identity. We lost our identity. Lost but uh, the maintenance, the managerial system, the maintenance budgets, uh, the, uh, the factors that keep the luxury, uh, uh, the factors that keep the firm as a luxury airliner was always there. Uh, these were the, some of the future plans. Very hazy, very sketchy. Yes, okay. Um, now, the last question from my side. Um, uh, you said that you moved from luxury. Yes, we moved from normal to luxury. 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 luxury and layer merger, the source of capital. And you said that loan is increasing like that. It's a huge amount of loan you have. So, how do you think that you can sustain the future? So, really, I think first, first of all, it's actually, I think we have to make use of our financial resources. Because we had a room limit of almost $8 million. So, 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 I think it was very, like, you know, if you want to grow as a company, I think you should always take loans and you should grow in a very organic position. You should have a very organic position. You should take a lot of loans and like, if you can't pay off the loans, that's going to be less. They're already, they're already make sense, like, you know. If you're going very organically and you know, you're just adding more aircraft, it won't make sense. But what we decided was to grow very organically. And so we took, so we made the maximum we use optimum utilization of our financial resources, like, you said it's an organic growth. So, so, yeah, so, so adding on to that, when you spend more in the first first few quarters, you don't need to spend that much uh, for marketing and promotions and the rest of like before later on. And we also uh, had like uh, cargo marketing budgets, like where a few other most of the firms stopped the cargo marketing because we were making negative figures. But from the fifth and the sixth quarter, we were making positive figures, and we thought that cargo marketing would cargo uh, cargo would really give us a good payback.